Game one of group four today is um, for them February the 6th. And this is the top 32 or 34 players. Uh, I, I believe it's 34 players. So the it's phase two and the player pool has narrowed down quite a bit. So we got more of the higher ranking players now. As you can see in this lobby, there's a rank 17 player, rank 35 here. A few other lords as well in this lobby. So how phase two works is another point system and um, they're gonna need to collect some more points in phase two and then they go into phase three, which is the broadcasted playoff uh, situation at that. So the pool of players should be cut down in half for that one. And after phase three is when it goes into the grand finals at ESL1 LA. So some players to look out for in this lobby who are really, really good are like Montroller, Fresno, so pan I actually they're all good players right but these are the ones like i know a lot about it's like these three guys martini leroy i've seen peach love play a few times i've seen sleep play too um they're all good i mean that's why they're all here in the top 34. so let's look at who understands um their comms well and what they're gonna plan to do here so in the recent patch that happened, there was like some changes to Eno, so that's going to be something big that we're going to be seeing. Um, and contract has not been removed or nerfed or adjusted in any way. So one thing that we always need to look at when we see lobbies like this is like if any player has contract, because that player is going to like, it's like from the very beginning of the game, you already have some kind of direction. And it seems like none of the players in this lobby have big time contract. So it's going to kind of be like a fair game. In the sense that whoever hits their units or whoever plays the best build is probably going to come out ahead. So we're just going to take a look at uh, what the builds in this game are going to look like. So Swift Panther here having some trolls and an early Beastmaster opening. He's got a few scrappies in the shop. I'm guessing he might consider selling uh, some maybe like the beast and the dazzle to pick up the clockwork and the timber saw since the timber is already paired up and we know that scrappy is a pretty good comp currently current and there's only one player who even remotely looks like he's in scrappies but we don't really know if he doesn't want to play scrappies or not Juanita bot made it to phase two wow um it's because there's only seven players in the lobby nick because they want to get as many lobbies as they can, so that's why. So it, it actually seems like he decided not to go for the Scrappies. And now he's playing for the 10 gold Eco Swift Panther, so it seems like if he took them, he would have a pair of Timbers, Clocks, and a Tinker. So he might be regretting that a little bit, but that's okay because he still has a pretty decent board. I'm thinking he's probably going to play into like some kind of a hunter build or a uh, knight build potentially. Peach Lub, he's got a few Pudges, two Drows as well, two Dazzles. He, Peach Lub's got a lot of uh, units on his bench and it seems like he didn't sell any of it to hit eco right because he got four gold and he only bought one unit from the shop so he didn't get the 10 gold interest there <laughs> so let's see what his next shop looks like and uh right now he's just running some savages with druids and it's helping him win some fights since they, it's a lot of power on his board currently and this next pack doesn't really help him figure out what kind of build that he's gonna play into so he just levels up puts in the witch doctor from the shop uh, that's gonna give him troll bonus, but this also drops him again below 10 gold So he's not gonna get another round of interest once again opting to keep his heavy bench and play for a Strong board at the same time Most of the time if you see players holding a heavy bench, they're probably not leveling up and 
try to save as much gold they can early game, sacrificing their health in exchange for it. But Pichlub trying to do both things is going to get punished here by Martini's triple, triple two stars of Tusk, Shaman, Nyx, and then with the inch also getting Druid. So Martini in round five, going to find a Midas and a Desolator in the shop. Both are really, really good for him. I'd probably still go with Midas, but Desolator is a less greedier choice. Uh, Midas still pretty good DPS, but Desolator can obviously help your entire team. So when you got openers like this and you find yourself a Midas, it's like super nice. He actually sold off the Legion Commander. That means he's not going to play into Legion this game. Whenever players prefer to play Legion Commander builds, um, if they get them early, they're just going to keep them as long as they can, especially till like around round 10. Leroy sub right now, it's just a pleb now. <laughs> Yo, sub Manafei. How's it going, bro? So Martini gonna win here. So Martini at this point with this kind of build, he's just trying to go for the win streaks, get whatever units that he can. He's a lot. He's looking a lot like he's gonna play into uh, savages here. Maybe some kind of like a good stuff late game comp with this kind of opener. So Swift Panther, we talked about how he had hunters. He's got a Midas now too on his Jar Ranger. That's gonna be nice. Leroy here has just a two-star axe with insects and a bounty hunter with Midas, that's really nice. He finds a sniper in the shop, that's really good if he wants to play into Scrappies as well. There's a good chance that if he wants to play that, he'll just sell off the Shadow Fiends here just to get interest points. Or if not, he might just sack the one interest point because he has a Midas, he can make up for it, and then he can just wait till next turn. And it looks like he's just gonna sell it. He He's made his decision that he wants to play into Scrappies with this kind of opener, which is really good because he's got a bounty too, he's got the Weaver, and now he's got the Sniper. If he finds a Druid, he can pair with the Shadow Shaman. That's not Enchantress. Maybe like a Trium Protector or a Londrid would be really nice here. He's leveling to 5, so next turn he has a, actually a chance to get LD, possibly. So Montroller here, also another player with a very deep bench, his items are Kaya and Crystallis. It looks like he's going to throw some insects into the board with Savages, and it seems like at this point in time, I wonder if he should have just played the Eng 2 star instead of the Tusk, or is Montroller playing for a loose streak? He isn't, so maybe the Eng 2 star would have been a little bit better. It's a bit tankier than the Tusk, gives us more damage and can cast heal. Um, and he's actually fighting into Leroy's bounty hunter board, and the bounty hunter just killed off his Venomancer DPS right away, and Montroller is not looking good right now. He's at 64 health on round 8, that's like really really bad. Um, so it's gonna be a tough situation for him to come back from at the moment. Presno here, playing into Assassins, cool. Not something you see all the time, but in a lot of games, Assassins do tend to come out ahead if they high roll just a little bit. And uh, now he's got an Alchemist with his Assassins. He's got a pair, a couple of Weavers, but he doesn't want to play with the Nyx since he has 2-star Bounty and the Queen of Pain. I wonder if Weaver and Nyx would be better than Tree and Shadow Shaman. Maybe he's just hoping that the Tree and 2-star would just kind of carry him. He also has a pair of Shadow Shamans and Tree and Protectors on the bench, which is really nice for him. Alright, so it's round 9 right now, we're about to get to round 
10 where we're gonna choose the underlord so we're gonna see what everybody will pick Montroller is gonna go ahead and pick himself probably he should go with jewel right so he got a tank first board yeah he does sleep takes um eno fresno got enthrall and essex for his queen of pain to do extra damage so panthers got eno as well Peach Love with an Essex and Martini and Leroy are both going with Eno. So Martini's got Martini and uh Mart Martini and Leroy both going for the all out attack Eno as well. They will never claim white spot. So Martini here fighting into Montroller's board. It looks like Montroller has decided to level up to six and put in another unit. And right now, Montroller with this two-star Shadow Shaman Enchantress Warlock, he's got a very interesting build, I would say. Like these are a lot of very cheap units that he can literally just sell off for perfect like gold. Like he doesn't lose anything for it, and it's actually making out to be a very strong board. And it looks like Fresno is the one who has dropped below Montroller currently. I do feel like Assassins kind of need Joel so that he can tank for them. So in a lot of situations, Enthrall might not have been like the best idea for him to go with. But now he's got a 3 and 2 star. So this is going to guarantee that he always has 3 and Protector 2 starred. And in this situation, I'd probably just take out the Shadow Shaman and put an Alchemist. So we get that extra minus armor for the assassins. Yeah, and that's what exactly what he's gonna do. Because he doesn't need the Shadow Shaman to get the Druid bonus anymore, right? It, the Alchemist 1 star is gonna be more valuable for the assassins just so that there's all this minus armor that the assassins can do extra damage off of. And it seems like he's still not strong enough. Fresno losing to sleep here, seems like. The enthrall just not coming off fast enough as uh Fresno's front line is very, very squishy. So Leroy here, making his full transition into Scrappies. He's got... Uh, the Weaver 2 star now doesn't have any Timber Saws or Tinkers though. That's kind of concerning for him going into the mid game. But he does have the Axe 2, Shaman 2 to help him out in the meantime. Peach Lub has got uh, Heartless Brutes. Oh boy, that's a 3 and 2 star also. So, and he got the upgrade. So he's really playing into some kind of like a... Brute, Heartless, like... Damage build. It's very interesting, it's not something that you see often, but I could definitely see it working, especially since he's got a, sh a whole bunch of upgrades. And uh, the only problem for him right now is that he doesn't have any gold. He's only sitting on 9 gold right now. It's a bit uh, suffering in the economy department. And Sleep here, playing with 4 Heartless, 3 Hunters. That's really strong uh, with the Lycan 2-star. He is losing right now because his Pudge is not 2-star yet. And Pudge is pretty much your biggest tank in these kind of situations. His other units are upgraded, which will help him. Um, he's found two more Lycans now. So he can he's on his way to like making a second 2-star Lycan. And then after that will be obviously a 3-star Lycan. So we'll see his shop will happen and how his board plays out. So he buys a Lycan. He has a free reroll, he hits it, he gets nothing, and in his fight, his Lycan is doing some damage, but not quite enough yet. Uh, mainly because the Pudge is just dying a little too fast, and that's just problematic, right? With the, if the Pudge is dying a little too fast, you're not going to be able to tank enough for your Lycan to build up damage in the fight. And it would be nice for him to have like some kind of a savage on the board so I can pair with the Lycan DPS with the hunter board. So I'm guessing that's gonna be Bristleback. Bristleback does all physical damage with this quill with this quill spray. <laughs> squill 
<laughs> Quill Spray and it does a lot of damage on uh, combined with the Heartless. So when the enemy has minus armor, the Quill Sprays do way more damage. So once Sleep goes to level 7, gets this Bristol back into the fight, then uh, this Lycan is going to be doing a lot of damage. So Panther on a 5 win streak now, wow, okay. So it looks like Swift Panther, the reason why he passed up on all those scrappies earlier in the game is because he wants to play into a brawny build with some Heartless units. So he's got a 2 star Abaddon and an Axe, and now he's building up into brawnies with insects on them. So he's got the Jar Ranger Abaddon making Heartless, he's got the Beastmaster Weaver Jar Ranger making Hunters, he's got the Axe Beast Bristol for the brawnies and the weaver brood for the insects so it's like a really efficient board and that's the reason why he's got uh, such a high win streak right now he's got an efficient board and they're pretty much majority of the units two starred and having an early axe beastmaster two star combo is really really powerful um to fight in the early slash mid game but he's in a really good spot currently now that bristleback though he would like to see a Upgrade as soon as he can. And Leroy, right now, taking out the wind streaker or is getting close to, but there is a scrappy bonus on this Leroy's Underlord, and that's gonna allow him to win the round. And he's gonna take out Swift Panther's wind streak. Leroy did go to level 8 quite early, so if Swift Panther was on the same level as he was, then maybe Swift Panther would have been able to maintain his win streak but he was unable to now he's got a blame mill for his axe that's a really good item for your axe um so that uh, you will also get some kills into the brawny bank so leroy gonna take over first place in the hp status with that last win leroy also taking a blame mill for his axe interesting still doesn't have any timber saws in any way so leroy is gonna be in a little bit of trouble in the mid game now or nearing more the mid late game because he's got a whole bunch of one stars and they're not even paired up like the tinker the sniper he's got a pair of clocks but there's no timbers available for him and here it is peach love with his pudge hooking out the draw hooking out the sniper getting rid of that really quickly And this Anno. This Anno seems to be doing quite a bit of damage. I mean, it kind of makes sense since <laughs> a lot, almost all the units are not yet 2 star for his board. So his Anno is like one of the strongest units. But this new change to the poison where it applies to everyone is kind of strong. So Martini's now has a win streak uh, running. Is playing into a 4 Savage Warlock build. So his goal is going to be to get to 9 so he can get that 4th uh, Warlock in. Another option could be to get rid of the Tree and Protector and put in a 4th Warlock too. Or the Nyx Assassin, like just not play Insects. But the Insects seem too valuable. Like these two are n neither Warlock or Savages and they could be replaced. But it's probably much better um, to have a tankier board than complete your alliances on level 8 anyway. So once he does go to level 9, he's going to easily be able to put like a Alchemist or Disruptor or something into this board. And that's going to make 4 Warlocks. And that's going to be an extremely, extremely powerful mid game board. And that's exactly what he's playing for. He's playing for the win streak at the moment. And he's doing well. The Shadow Fiend and Phenomancer doing mad damage here. I'd probably move one of my Desolator or Midas to my Shadow Fiend at least, like give him one of the damage items. Because uh, he, one, he's going to live pretty long, and two, you want uh, the damage amplification on these guys to be guaranteed. 
So Sleep here did finish the Pudge 2 star and he's actually going also for a 3 star Pudge interestingly enough. So he didn't find any more Lycan since the last time we checked out his board. He does get an Alchemist here which is a really good uh, damage amplification for Heartless and Hunters with the minus armor from Acid Spray. So that's a good unit. But I can't imagine him getting to level 8 and putting that in quite yet unless he ditch yeah so he's gonna sell off the pudges he could probably sell the beast tv as well like the only reason why he's keeping these units is probably maybe because he wants to play six hunters but it's feeling a lot like getting to six hunters this game is going to be hard hard for sleep especially since his hp is already so low and montroller wow we did not even see that montroller's hp has dropped to six already it's round 18 he's got six health Montroller was supposed to be one of the favorites to uh, do well in this lobby, but he might be the first one out. He's got uh, some... He's also playing with Savage Warlocks. He does not have the Insects like how Martini does. Martini did end up losing his win streak, it seems like, or he completed it. Not really sure. Um, but it, Montroller did get a 2 star Disruptor though all of a sudden on round 19. Now he might want to put that in a position where he, he can charge mana faster. Disruptor is not a unit that hits very fast so his mana charging potential is really really slow as well. Are you playing on this tournament? No I'm not Billy. <sighs> And here it is, Peach Lub gonna fight into Montroller's board, Montroller's, seems like he's doing good here, he's gonna, he's gonna live, oh Juanita bot is gonna save Montroller from getting 8th place, that was pretty close Montroller, you almost got 8th buddy, and now he's gonna put Peach Lub into single digit health as well, and Peach Lub risking dying out in Seventh place here. So Peach Lub um, got the early punch to draw combo and had a lot of two stars, but at this point it feels like didn't really get much after that. And uh, there's a huge struggle at the moment. There's a jarring, there's a troll warlord getting paired up in this shop, but unfortunately for Peach Lub, this might just be the end here without a bunch of upgrades um, or really powerful alliances. It's not going to look too hot. And there you have it. Each love getting outscaled by Leroy. Leroy, Leroy already hitting Dusa and Gyrocopter in his build. Very impressive here for Leroy. And Montroller going to get eliminated in 6th place by Fresno's Assassins. So that was a really bad matchup for Fresno there. Oh, sorry, Montroller there. Montroller getting beat by the Assassin board who re reduces the enemy healing. Um, now let's look at items. Swift Panther picking up a Defusal Blade. Martini picking up a Vladimir's. Those just snap picks right there. Um, Fresno, what is he going to go for? Probably a Defusal Blade. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and take a Defusal. Sleep picked up it looks like a silver edge um and leroy got himself a maelstrom for his weaver cool uh you can also use maelstrom on dusa and she can pretty much like proc every single attack because she's hitting most of the time two to three units at a time so but weaver also a unit that hit, attacks very fast can proc many many maelstrom hits as well how many phases in this tourney? So this is phase 2. Phase 3 will be the official cast playoffs. That's gonna be in 2 weeks from now. Oh you picked the Maelstrom, okay. So Leroy here fighting into Martini's board and Leroy gonna come out ahead. Martini getting put down to 19 health. Martini uh... On level 8, he decided not to level up to 9 fast. 
does find himself a Bristleback. Oh, he just skipped two Lycans. I guess he's not going to be playing into six Savages. He's just going to keep rolling on A tier. Does find a Lone Druid upgrade as well on top of the Bristleback. And there's an Alchemist in the shop. Is he going to ditch the Venomancers for this Alchemist? Or is he just going to lock it? Because uh, selling out for the Sanking does not seem like the best option here. And he's just going to lock it. So he's going to hold out. So I can finish this Venomancer, 3 star, hopefully the turn after as well. And that's going to be a lot of damage. Um, and it looks like he just rolled down so he can like try to stabilize himself and not die. He just wants to get himself a better placement. He understands there's two other players who are high health and he just got crushed by Sleep's board. Sleep got to deal 17 damage to Martini. Sleep. Making a huge comeback here with his Lycan 3-star. That was very impressive. He's also got the Bristleback 2 as well. Um, this is what we all fear. This is what we call the Big Boss 3-stars. And the Big Boss 3-stars are doing work. And Sleep going to find a Medusa in the shop. Is he going to actually play it though? He can play it over the Alchemist, which can potentially give him a lot of DPS. Uh, since if all the hunters are hitting the same target, there's the ace bonus allows them to deal extra damage, which is pretty powerful. But it looks like uh, Sleep is just going to decide to leave it on the bench for now. Once Doesn't really want to replace any of the current hunters he has for a 2 star, or for a 1 star Medusa. So this Lycan is going to get frozen by the Dusa here. And Leroy high rolling the Medusa 2 and Gyro 2 on round 23. That is absolutely insane. Getting both of these units to start by round 23 is uh, that's crazy. I haven't I haven't seen that in a while. That's for sure. So Fresno and Swift Panther beating out Martini's board. Um, Fresno is not gonna die first, so Martini's gonna get knocked down in fifth place. Now it's Sleep and Fresno that are left here with single digit health we can expect both of these guys to go out in third and fourth i think what they want is to not fight into leroy leroy's board is pretty much in the by far the strongest out of everyone's and also leroy was solo and scrappy so nobody was looking for these aces and for him it was just super easy to pick them up as well And it looks like Fresno might be might actually be Lero here, and he's gonna live one more turn and sleep be Swift Panther. So sleep and Fresno, maybe they're coming back a little bit here with uh, their units. Sleep boss player getting top four poggers. He's the man. Just gonna look at his shop. Decide to buy a lich. Maybe he he wants to put Lich in over the Shadow Demon. He thinks that's better. I'm not gonna get any interest points here. What's the level positioning? And there it is, sleep. Gonna get knocked out. 20 damage by Leroy. That was probably the worst matchup for him. And let's look at Fresno, how he's doing. And Fresno just beat Swift Panther for another 11 here. If Fresno can get away with two more rounds, he can secure himself second place. And he is getting really strong. He's got the Void 2 star, Queen of Pain with uh, Crystals. Takes up the Butterfly for his Faces Void. Absolutely insane item for Faces Void. And this could actually be the comeback. The only thing is there's a Sark 1 for Fresno on both ends here. And does not have a Dragon Knight. Oh, there's his first Dragon Knight. He's found in the game. Um, he can put that in over the extra Sark that he's playing. And he's going to do exactly that. Oh, it's just for show. I see.
Wait, you did it, Caladian? Your lord? Congratulations, bro. Nice. And there it is. Another round where Fresno fighting into Swift Panther again. And but this time around, it looks like Swift Panther's gonna do it. He's gonna win. With that little bit of extra HP his Brawny's picked up. His Brawny's got 61 kills currently. And Fresno gonna go out in third place. And Swift Panther not going into the scrappy is actually helping him out. And him having Vladimir's is gonna really be problematic for Leroy just a little bit as long as the Abaddon survives in the fights. So what's going to happen in the fights now is that the draw is going to get picked off first because of the Deadeye and then it's going to be focused on to the Disruptor or the Shadow Fiend, right? So... Wait, what? Oh, it got insects into the board? Oh no, it just switched positioning with the Brood and the Beast. Surprisingly for Swift Panther, he has not been able to find any Broods in this game. Uh, it's using the same Brood one that he's had from the start. Oh, it's gonna go to the SF first and then the Shopter because Shopter has too much HP because of the uh, brawny synergy. But putting the, the Shopter in a better position to charge up mana faster could be good for Swift Panther to be able to have a chance at beating Leroy. But as of right now, it doesn't have a Juggernaut, it doesn't have a whole lot of damage, just a bit of sustain with the Warlocks, but it's not looking too good for Swift Panther anymore. Leroy. With the Omega high roll, double ace two stars on round 22 is just too much for anybody to handle. I haven't played the new Anna yet. It seems like Swift Panther is getting a little bit stronger in the fights now, especially since the brownies keep growing with getting all the kills. And he was able to lose with very minimal health loss, so that's 5 health, he's gonna get another free roll here, he is level 10 already. And uh, for the next fight, all his brawny units are gonna have a little bit more HP already. And yeah, I think this disruptor, I wouldn't even mind putting the disruptor right directly behind the axe, so it will take more collateral damage. That way, ooh, ooh, that is a big upgrade with the alchemist there. That was really solid. Sanking instead of brood? No, can't, right? Because he needs a four warlocks, he's not going to do that. So I, yeah, I definitely put the Disruptor a little bit further ahead, and the Alchemist too, so he can charge mana quicker. Um, but right now he's putting like the SF right behind the draw and it's getting like dead-eyed, which I'm not sure is intentional, but it doesn't, it wouldn't feel really good um, doing that generally. And the Disruptor, yeah, it's just not charging fast enough at this point, and that's gonna be it here. Too many units alive, and Swift Panther gonna take exactly 14 damage, gonna die. Leroy getting first. So, our top four were Leroy, Swift Panther, Fresno, then Sleep. Oh.